welcome to Stockholm. Thank you. It feels unreal that you're finally here. It's it's not a hologram after two and a half no, years. It, no, it's, it's you in person. Yeah. It's the jet lagged me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I thought <clears throat> if we could actually start how you work. I know you have the same work routine. Six day, uh, days a week you go to work. Your alarm rings seven at six o'clock, maybe even seven days. Can, can, can you tell about the work? How, how do you work every day? I, I show up, you know. <clears throat> I get up around, yeah, about 6.30. I don't even have an alarm clock. I just get up on my own. Um, or my cat jumps on the bed and wakes me up. But, um, you know, I just I, I go to work, you know. I, I have, you know coffee, get caffeinated. And, yeah. and you have the coffee <laughs> at the same place every morning? Um, sometimes at home, sometimes. There's yeah. a place called the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. Do you guys have that out here? Yeah, yeah, we, we know what it is. Yeah. Oh my God, ice blended mochas. It's the best. <laughs> it's a competitor to Starbucks, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, I think it's amazing because you've done so much, written so many timeless songs that you could sort of relax a little no, bit. I never relax. No, no. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and then you, you drive from your house in like Hollywood Hills down to your office. Yeah. Um, and your office is in a part of Los Angeles which is not the most obvious part to choose to work in, really. It's in old Hollywood. You could yeah. compare it to Drottninggatan in Stockholm. It's full of tourists, lost souls wandering around. Yeah, it's a grungy part of Hollywood. Yeah. But, I, but I love it. Like, it's, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not a slick person. I don't, I like, you know, I, I work in my room that I've been in for, you know, decades, basically. You know, I own a building down the street, but I mainly still work in my, in my old place. Yeah. And what happens each morning when you enter that workspace, what do you do then? I go to work. <laughs> it's like it's hard to explain. I just sit down and work. Yeah. I mean, do you sit I guess down? it's easy to explain. It's hard to explain yeah. how it happens or whatever. I, I just, you know. Yeah. I always say that my process is, is showing up, which, which it is. Yeah. Do you have like an idea to start with or do you sit at the piano? Or how it do depends you? on what day it is. I could be starting something or I could be working on something I started. Um, I have a guitar in my hotel room here. This morning I was working on something, so mm. that, that was working on already. You know, yeah, it's, it just depends on, on the day. I'm always working on something though. Mm. Benny Anderson of Abba told me he just goes also to the office every day and just plays piano for two hours. Yeah. And then one, uh, most days nothing happens, but something suddenly turns up like the Mamma Mia or something. Right, right. Can, can you re relate to that? You, you really mean, have to show up. Yeah, you have to show up or, or you're not gonna come up with that one spark, you know? Mm. You never know. I don't analyze it, I just, I just do it, you know? And, and, but, but, but that's true. There was an earthquake uh, in Los Angeles in 1986. Uh, 94. 94, yeah. yeah. Which was really messy. Um, yeah. building, some buildings collapsed. Yeah. Your building was still intact. Yeah. But your cassettes and everything <laughs> got thrown on the floor. Yeah, and it still looks like that. Uh, and, you, 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 and you still haven't cleaned it. No. No, I had to put my keyboards back. They fell too, but yeah. you know, they couldn't stay on the floor. I needed a plan. Is that because of superstition? No, I think I'm just lazy at this point. <laughs> I mean, like, for real. I think at one point I was superstitious, but now it's like, fuck it. Yeah. yeah. Um, do, and you still, you have these work hours and you still record, you have a cassette tape, very yeah, nice I badge mean, I, here. I use you it to record my songs, you know, but to record demos and records. I don't use those. I just use my, I have my Walkman. <clears throat> I've, just, it's, I've just been using it forever, yeah. so I still use it. And why do you choose the Walkman when there are endless digital digital? Because it's there, I just had never, I mean, I use my phone too, by yeah. Way, so yeah. But I only know how to use the visual part of my phone. Mm. So, you know. When you have like a song, starts getting like a song, yeah. 
what happens then? Who do you call people? Are you interested in this? Or how does the song go from your work desk to an artist? I mean, I just, you know, I write a lot of songs, so sometimes I just put them away, you know, and, and till the right artist comes along. You know, or I, or I could write something and I just think it's right for somebody and I'll reach out to them. Um, you know, or like I, I have a song called Only Love Can Hurt Like This that I, that I wrote and I didn't, I had no idea who could do it. And then I, I heard Paloma Faith. I was like, oh, there's the voice for that song. And, you know, she didn't want to, she, at first she didn't want to hear it. She goes, I write my own songs, mm. you know. And um, I met with her and I, and I played it. I, I go, just, you know, have an, op have an open mind. You know, I'll play it on the phone you know, when you get it back home. She's from the UK. And um, I called her, she didn't want to hear, she just didn't. I go, just listen to it, and then she hung up on me and emailed me that I'm on my way to, to LA right now to record it, it's the best song I ever heard. So, um, so that was one example, yeah. you know. And it has this weird resurgence on, um, on TikTok right now, like, like almost half a million videos really? on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't know how that stuff, I, don't, I really don't understand how that, mm -hmm. how that shit works, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad it does. Yeah. <laughs> when one listens closely to your songs, listen to like 20 Diane Warren songs in a row, you realize there's so many different genres you work in, but yeah. one thing is in common, you, you also are not only a brilliant songwriter, you're also Thanks. a great storyteller. You're always you. telling stories with your songs. Thank you. <laughs> Is, is, is that important to you? Do you think of songs as stories? I just write them, you know, and, and hope that, that they connect and, and hope that people can, you know, create their own stories with them too. Hollywood has definitely noticed this quality in your songs. Uh, you have written songs for more than a hundred Hollywood movies. Yeah. I, I do a lot of stuff for movies. I, I, I just lost my 13th Oscar, yeah, yeah. So, and I made history, so. <laughs> so, I think, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm now the, big, I'm the biggest female loser in, in the entire history of the Academy yeah. Awards. 94 years, yeah. I am. The, big, wait, the biggest female one, there's only two guys ahead of me. Yeah, yeah. So. I, can, I think that's kind of cool. We can always see you on TV in Sweden every year, and there comes yeah. Diane Warren, yeah. <laughs> and then you don't win. But I mean, it's okay. The, you know what? <laughs> being nominated yeah. really is a big win because yeah. there's only five songs chosen. Mm -mm. You know, for, for the Oscars, there's only mm -hmm. there's hundreds of movies and, and hundreds of songs. You know, unlike the Grammys, you know, the Grammys have so many cat song categories. You know, but so that's a win. Yeah. 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 How does that work? That process work? Do you get like a pitch? Someone calling you says like we have a, a legal drama and we need a love song. Or how does that uh, process go? I mean, people reach out to me, you know, and I either read a script, you know, or or, or I watch the movie, you know, just see where, you know, it's basically what I want to see in that, what I want to hear in that movie. Mm. So I just, you know. It's like I have a subconscious computer in my brain after I see it or read it, you know, that I just figure out what to, what to, where to go with it, so. And you, you did actually study movies way back in school. No, I didn't really study movies. My dad said he'd support me if I went to college, so I took, you know, all kinds of history of movies and stuff just so I wouldn't have to do anything except sit in the back of class and work on my songs. <laughs> so somehow a kind of, you know, by osmosis, I think by watching all yeah. these movies, I kind of, I don't know, but I didn't really study movies per se, but I watched a lot of them because it was a great way to go to school and not do shit <laughs> <laughs> and have my dad support me. And that's how you make a living. Yeah. 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 But I was doing shit. I mean, I wasn't like, not, I mean, I wasn't, I just wasn't doing anything in school. Mm. Um. One benefit, I guess, as a songwriter, writing for movies, I guess you get paid up front. Usually you have to wait for like two or three years for royalties, but do, yeah. do you get like a fee up front? I mean, sometimes not much, you know, because mm. a lot of times I do stuff because I love it and they're not yeah. necessarily, you know, big budget movies. And, you know, if I, if I love something, I'm just going to do it because mm. I, I love it. So 
Mm. It's not always a big. <coughs> it's not always a big fee. Mm. You, you mentioned your father tomorrow at the ceremony, the polar music ceremony, and I hope I'm not spoiling everything. Because you loved me, uh, one of your greatest songs, Thank known you. by Celine Dion. A fantastic Swedish pop artist called Darin is going to sing that song. I know that's not only one of your biggest hits, but it's also a quite personal song for you. Can you tell the story about that song? Yeah, I mean, I wrote it for the movie um, Up Close and Personal. And I also, my dad really believed in me and, and my music. Um, and so it was a chance to, to, to thank him in that song. So at the same time, I was, I was writing it you know, to, to be... Um, for that movie and the, the ending of that movie, you know, it just, you know, I got to, you know, be able to thank my dad too. So, mm -hmm. and then it became a big wedding song and a big funeral song, which is really weird, yes. right? <laughs> the same song, but it worked. Yeah. It works. And it started as a sort of a thank you song to, yeah. to your dad, yeah. really. Can you talk a little bit how about your childhood and upbringing? Part. <laughs> uh, the, uh, maybe we could start. You are from the Valley. Yeah, Van Nuys, uh, California. Yeah, yeah. Which is close to Los Angeles in a way, but it's also quite oh, it's another a million, galaxy. It's a million miles. Yeah, it's a galaxy away. It's just, yeah. you know, it, yeah, it's a million miles away. Yeah. It's like being from the Midwest or something. Yeah. yeah. What was it like growing up there? You know, it's just, you know, it's growing up wherever you grow up, right? I, I mean, I just hated school, so I got kicked out of a couple of them. Um, I was kind of a rebel. I kind of still am. Um, what did you do to get kicked out of school? That's a quite serious oh, thing. Oh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, smoking pot, forging my parents' signatures, um, just being a basic <laughs> fucked up kid. <laughs> so, but it was all right because I, I knew what I wanted to do. Like, I, school wasn't it for me, you know? I wasn't learning in the classroom. I was learning by studying Billboard by listening to the radio and, and by, you know, writing songs. You had two older sisters? Yeah, yeah. Who brought home records? Yeah, yeah. What, 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 what records got you into pop music or popular music? Well, one of my sisters is 14 years older and one's 11 years older. And, and my parents too, so there was like all kinds of music in the house, you know, growing up. So, you know, everything. I got, that's what really, where I really learned was just hearing, having, you know, listening to their records and show tunes that my mom and dad had in the radio, you know, and the Beatles and Motown and, and everything, you know, so. Most people who hear songs and get inspired and want to be in the music business dream of being an artist. Yeah, not me. No. Yeah. No, I, I, I never had aspirations for that. It wasn't anything I wanted. We used to have records, kids. They were little 45s, and they had little parentheses. And um, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be in there, not on a stage. So bye. Just kidding. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. You wanted to be that very small name yeah. under the artist's name. Yeah, I'm yeah. fine with that. You know, I li you know I'm, I'm, I'm fine being in the background. I yeah. like it. Yeah. I remember you told me when we met in Los Angeles like two and a half years ago. One of, you even remember one of those records. I think it was underneath the small names were uh, Goffin King. Yeah, it was, um, was it Up on the Roof? Yeah. Yeah, my sister had the record. I saw that. I want to be in there. And they also happened to... Uh, Jerry Goffin and Carol King, they had a quite similar background uh, as, as you have. Um, did you know that by, by then that they were sort of Jewish working in a song factory? Did, did you no. know that? No, I, didn't, I had no idea. I was a kid, you mm -hmm. know, but I just saw that. It's weird that I, that I kind of knew what I wanted to be, but maybe I was psychic. Mm -hmm. You are the We're one psychotic. of the few people I met who you actually saw the, the Beatles. Twice. The benefits of having an older sister. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, at Hollywood Bowl and Dodger Stadium. Yeah. Saw them both places. Do you, uh, it, uh, and then last year, was it last year or the year before, I, you know, Paul McCartney and Ringo sang on a song of mine. 
you know, with, with, with some pretty big guest stars, but, but uh, you know, like Chris, I think it was Chris Stapleton and Cheryl Crow and Lenny yeah. Kravitz, a song called Here's to the Nights. All I know is I have two Beatles on my song, and it's still like, what? There's still, there's never anything hmm. that's going to be cooler than that. Your father, you were sort of, you were not interested in school, you were just trying to write songs. Yeah. And one part of them must have been, they must have been irritated by you, but also supportive. Your father bought like a garden shed, is that true? <laughs> where, where you yeah, work? a shed for the backyard. Because yeah. one thing I do is I, when I'm writing, I'm, I play stuff over and over and over. Yeah. You know, and it was like, I think I was, it was driving my parents crazy. So they bought, you know, my dad bought the shed, had a little heater in it, and if it got cold. I was pretty happy there, you know. The, I had my guitar, that was, that was cool. Do you remember the first songs you wrote in that shed that actually became songs recorded by an artist? No, none of those songs. I was, oh. you know, you know. I don't think anybody would ever record them. I don't remember them, so. Have you seen the movie Licorice Pizza, Paul Thomas Anderson? Yeah. Yeah. Which was uh, one of those. But there was no licorice pizza in there. No, which no. Drove but, me but crazy. it's a, it's a, it's a brilliant about the the valley. What, what what it's like? This sort of suburban quality of it. Yeah. 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 Do you think that being from the valley, sort of dreaming of Los Angeles, has that influenced your songwriting? I don't know. I mean, it it. I don't know if it influenced my songwriting. It was just some, you know, I had to get out of the valley to, you know, I mean, not have to get, I don't even know what I'm saying, but I had to, you know, I had to, I aspired to a dream. Mm. So wherever you're from, it doesn't matter if you're from the valley or from Stockholm, wherever you're from, you know, you have a dream and, and you have to chase it. So. And exactly that is, is, is quite true of, of um, quite a lot of you, 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 your songs. You really capture that. One of your biggest songs is uh, Share. You've written a lot of songs to Share, maybe like over 20. Something like 20, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've done uh, a lot of songs for yeah. sure. Yeah, and if I could turn back time, yeah. which is now like the iconic Cher song yeah. with the video on the back. She still fits into that outfit. Do you believe that? Yeah. <laughs> and she just turned 76. I mean, yeah, yeah. She, Cheryl, she, 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 she says that at the end of the world, there'll be Cher and the cockroaches, and my money will be on, the, on Cher. <laughs> she, she will outlive the cockroaches and have another comeback. No. But, but it's quite funny. And have a farewell tour in the year 3000. <laughs> mm. Whatever. <laughs> when we did interview her for, for this, it was part of the movie we just saw, she described you as the most stubborn person she ever met. So yeah, I and think she's pretty stubborn herself, yeah, so that's yeah. saying something. So it's like two stubborn <laughs> people uh, yeah. meeting. But I was right. Yeah. <laughs> You know? And, and, and what, 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 what happens when you say, this is a perfect song for you, and she refuses to record it? What, what happens then? Can you describe that? I mean, that? I ran into her in the studio and literally held her leg down until she agreed to, yeah. to, yeah. to try it. I really yeah. did. Yeah. So it's just like, it's like when, I'm, when I know I'm right, you can't stop me. No. And, yeah. and you don't mean that metaphorically. You actually yeah, literally. You, you took her leg literally. and re refused yeah. to let go. Yeah, yeah. 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 So she, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she was happy like after that. <laughs> not, not then, but after that. Yeah. So. Uh, another song that will be before that um, Polar Prize ceremony uh, tomorrow is "I Don't Mean a Thing." The Aerosmith yeah. classic power ballad. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting in a lot of ways, I think, because those kind of rock groups like Aerosmith weren't supposed to get songs from other people. Yeah, that was the, that was the only song, the only cover they ever did, except yeah. a Beatles song, which doesn't count. You no, know? no. Like it's the Beatles, but yeah, they're they're you know they were you know they weren't a, a, exactly a group that that did outside songs, but. It kind of worked out when they did that one. Mm. So, but but, but ha have they? Thank because that's one of their like two best-known songs. 
yeah. w w did they appreciate that at, at that time, or they, they, did they sort of kind of hide the fact that it was you had written it? Well, I think they appreciate it. You know, at the same time, I remember Steven Tyler, I think, did... He, it was the MTV Awards, and was, he did an interview, and he goes, that's an, the last time we'll sell out and do a Diane Warren song. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think, you know... I mean, maybe it was strange at the time, but that's the, the biggest hit they've ever had, and, mm. you know, I think they, they're happy with it now, and I don't think he says that anymore. <laughs> I was like, dude, why are you saying something like that? But... It used to be... Most songs were written by duo constellations, for instance, Jerry Goffin and Carol right. King, Lennon McCartney. Right. But you, and nowadays it's like you, you to check the credits. Yeah, it's like a team. Yeah, it's, it's like, what do ten, you guys actually do? Yeah, like it's when there's 12 10, songs 10 or 15 people. Yeah, right. It's all, you have, you have it done somewhere or two, but it's almost only you. Yeah, it's basically only me. Yeah. Why do you decide to, to write in that way? That's just what works for me. You know, I don't need five other people. I don't really need, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of all I need to, to, to write a song. And I, I have my own way of doing it, and I love it, and, you know, my best songs are written that way. It's kind of weird, like I'm kind of a unicorn now, aren't I? Yeah, you know, you like there's not, a lot, there's not a lot of us, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's, it's what works for me, and, and I love kind of, kind of having to, you know, figure it all out. It's like a puzzle. If you check uh, Billboard um, statistics of the songwriters, the sole songwriters who has written the most Billboard number one songs, yeah. it's a tie between you and Lionel Richie. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> in, in, in Billboard history, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Lionel. Crazy. On, on the, the office building you mentioned, it says Real Songs. Real Songs, yeah. Yeah, which is your company. Yeah. Which is a, a little bit of a version of the Brill building, but nowadays, with one big difference. There's only one client. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a landlord. There's other people that, that rent for, uh, in that building, but yeah. at, at my company, there's only one writer, yeah. yeah. When did you start representing yourself only your own songs? For... A long time, you know, for 30, over 30 years. Yeah. What, what made you do that? It's quite common that people don't realize the importance of owning your own songs. I mean, I was signed to, to somebody that I was in a lawsuit with, and um, during the time, I wasn't able to sign with anybody else, and I'd had a big hit called Rhythm of the Night, and um, even though people wanted to sign me, I couldn't sign with them, and my lawyer mm. said, you know, you have to start a publishing company, and I was like, you know, why? People were offering me a million dollars. I was making, you know, I was making $200 a week, so it was like a big deal. <clears throat> and she said, you know, you just have to start your own company and, and you know, and you can't really sign with anybody and just start it. And then I, you know, I settled with the former publisher and I never looked back and I owned all my songs. So it, it, it you know, it was a really smart business decision, but it was an accidental one, to be honest. So... But it no, all worked out. Yeah. Nowadays, you hear in the news almost every week somebody selling their, their publishing. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm. People that you wouldn't think would do it, too. No. You know, I'm not doing it. No. Never. No. My soul's not for sale. It would be like selling my soul. Which I think is great, you know? yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's... Any price. And some of the, I mean, they're just spending a lot of money. I'm like, it's not going to impress me. I don't yeah. care. That's my life. You know, my life's work, so. Is, is there a story behind the name of the company, Real Songs? No, it's Real Songs. And what's the difference? Because I like to write real songs. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And really songs, too, because they're really songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I could yeah. be that, too. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> There, there's no uh, songwriter in the history who are as versatile as you. You have written pop, rock, soul, R&B, rap, gospel, country, jazz, metal, Latin, reggae. Did I miss anything? You don't want to miss a thing. No. <laughs> 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 Thanks. I haven't really written rap, though, to be honest. I, I get, like, I, I worked with rappers. Like, you have worked with Snoop, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, Snoop, but, he, but yeah. Yeah, I got him to sing. Yeah, yeah, okay. And yeah. when I worked with, with Common, mm -hmm. he did the rap on, on yeah. the Andrew Day song. 
how is that possible? How can you work with so many different genres of music? Because I think I grew up listening to everything, so I was able to be influenced by everything. And in fact, I did this my features album that came out last year, and it was it was such a, I wanted that to be like a microcosm of what I do. So you had like you know John Batiste, and then you had Celine, and then you you had Marin Morris, and then you had like Ty Dolla Sign and G Easy and people like that, to Louise Fonzi. So it was all, you know all over the, every every genre of music was was basically on there. So you know, it, it's fun for me. Yeah. I like to I like to jump around styles. Mm -hmm. So that keeps was it interesting. A, yeah, that was the first for you. That last year, as you said, you did this album, the first album in your own name. Yeah. You didn't sing on anything, no. but you, that's other why people, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but did you, you, you you played piano on it or? No, I didn't really do anything on it no, except no. I sang some backgrounds on yeah. it. I, mean, I wrote some. I wrote the songs. Yeah, that's something, yeah. but. Um, but the, you know, the artist did all the work. Mm. But what made you so. decide to do that after all these years? Finally, there, there actually isn't there were an album. Because I, I just saw like all these DJs doing stuff like that, and I thought, you know, why can't I curate a record, you know, of of you know of my songs with just and, and put a bunch of artists that, that I really like on there and, and a bunch of different kinds of songs. So that's what I did. Um. You have no formal music education, really? Not re no, not really. Uh, you know. What's the best thing and the worst thing about not having a music uh, education? I mean, I, I think what's good, you know, I took one little theory class, but, you know, I don't know what I learned. I, I, you know, I have ADD, ADHD, is that, is that it? What, so I can't even say them. <laughs> um, I think it's, you know, I, I, I think that if I was so educated, I would, I would, think that's, you can't do that. And I don't know enough to know you can't do that. So I'll do shit that's weird, and, but I like it. Like, does that answer your question? In, in a way, <laughs> right. uh, how, how would you define weird? Maybe it's weird that maybe you have a chord that's not supposed to be there, do you mean that? Yeah, like I remember writing um, Blame It On The Rain, the Millie Vanilli song, and my hand slipped, and I went up a half step in the middle of the verse, which was really weird, but I, but I, I, I really liked it. And I remember my guitar player coming in, we were demoing up the song, he goes, you can't do that. You know, that's, that doesn't make any sense. I go, but yeah, it fucking makes sense to me. You know, and it, so, like, I don't know, I just kind of go with, with what I like and what I feel. I don't, anal I don't like to analyze stuff, it's, you know, I just go with what, what I like. Which is similar in a way to uh, Beatles and also ABBA. The songs sound simple, but when people write down the, the, yeah. the chords, it's very old yeah. the chords, the strange chords. Singers sometimes get really, hate me sometimes. They go, God, it sounded so easy. And then once they're in the studio, yeah. it's really, it, they're not, my songs aren't as simple as they sound. The phrasings are weird, you know, they, mm. sometimes they don't make sense, but, but they do. Maybe that's the secret of being able to write a song that sounds good the first time, but it is also so complex you can actually listen to it a hundred times without yeah, getting bored. Yeah, it keeps yeah. it interesting, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you think define a good pop song? Um, what defines a good pop song? It, it sounds great. The melody works with the lyrics. I don't know. I, I know what defines it for me when I hear it, you know, but is, does words, it words and music that belong together that can't yeah. live without each other. Does that make any sense? It does in your case. Maybe we talked about the Oscar nominations. One of the criteria yeah. for being nominated as best song is not only that's a good song, mm -hmm. the song really has to be useful for the story. Yeah, it, ha it has to work within that movie or, or at the end of the movie. It has to, you know, tie it together emotionally, mm. you know. Um, yeah. But the best, my best movie songs work outside of the movies as well. So I, a I aim for that. Mm. Uh, what do you think makes you so good at writing love songs? I mean, your songs are played at... Uh, Weddings, people giving birth, <laughs> everything. What, what, what do you think you, makes your song so time. useful? Um, I don't know. I don't think about it. 
You know, I, I, I think hopefully because they're good songs. Yeah. But you, you must invest in them emotionally. Yeah, I, I really get into them. I really try to make every song I write mm. as great as it can be. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm that character when I'm writing the song. So, you know, I, I put a lot of work in. Yeah. So hopefully it pays off and hopefully people like the songs. Mm. When you're, you're not having this work routine going from your house to this very simple studio, uh, you, you have like a house in Malibu, I understand, which is basically for keeping your animals. I, I have a rescue ranch. I'm, a yeah. anim, I'm an animal advocate um, as well. I love animals. and um, So I've, I've, I've rescued a lot of farm animals there. So don't eat meat, guys, if you can, if you can help it. It's, it's horrible. It's cruel. You know, so I do what I can to help animals. And Malibu seems a quite uh, an exclusive address to have this I mean, rescue farm. No, I mean, they don't live on the beach in a no, mansion, no. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a ranch, you okay. know, a, a functioning that, that ranch. I think when I think of Malibu. I thought it you was think they're lounging on chairs, yeah, yeah, getting, yeah, yeah. getting a tan? No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, but mm. it's, it's a proper ranch mm. with all kinds of cool animals on mm. it. And you really seem to, to, to love animals. You have a, a, a parrot in, in the studio? I do. Yeah. Butt wings. Yeah. Yeah. Which is also quite years old. similar to Iggy Pop, who will you meet tomorrow if you haven't met him. No, I've never met he, him. He's got a cockadoo. Is it cockatoo? Yeah, no, uh, I think it's cockatoo, the right word. The, the white ones? Yeah, the white ones. I, yeah. used to, I used to have one a long time yeah. ago that passed away named Ca Casper. Yeah. They're, they're really smart birds. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. We have to have a meet and greet with yeah. our parrots yeah. sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Since you have been listening to music your whole life and are a brilliant songwriter, what songs, maybe this is a difficult question, but what songs do you wish you had written? When I'm asked that question, I always say the same thing. I don't wish I'd written any song that, that I didn't write because I wasn't meant to write it. It's, just, it's <laughs> but simple. If you rephrase the question, what, what are your all-time favorite songs? God, I have a lot of them. And I, it's, it's, and I can never think of them. When I, when, but I, I have a lot of favorite songs that, that influenced me and, you know, through the years, you know. You, you, I mean, yes, uh, the Beatles and the Beach Boys yeah. are obvious ones. But you yeah, and, and Burt Backrack and Stevie Wonder, yeah. and, you know, and just, mm. you know, Prince and... and so many great yeah. songwriters. Bert Bacharach, yeah. Stevie Hal Wonder, David. Paul McCartney. They have a Goff and King, you know, Barry yeah. Mann, Cynthia Wilde. But those are also Polar Music Prize laureates. Right, no, I, I yeah, mean, yeah. the fact that I'm getting the same award as, that Bert Bacharach did is, yeah. is pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so. What does it feel like being here in Sweden right, right now, accepting well, the award? It feels that I need some sleep. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a little jet lag. But yeah, it's like, it's, um, yeah, it's, no, it's great being here. I mean, I'm, 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 so, I'm, I'm so happy because finally, because it was supposed to be a couple of years ago and COVID kind of fucked that up. But oh, now when I'm here and I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm excited. It's like amazing. It's mm. a beautiful city, you know, and yeah. What 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 do you think? You, you will will you always try to be uh, as disciplined when working? Do you think you will go back to the same pace as you always had? Or, or, what do you? How do you think ab uh, 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 about the future? I'm just going to do what I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I love, this is what I, this is, it's not really a job. It's my life. So I, I love doing it. So I'm not going to like retire and sit on a beach. I'd be fucking bored. Like, you know, I'm, I, yeah. <laughs> just going to keep doing what I do. Yeah. I know there are aspiring songwriters listening now. What advice what would you give to someone who just started and wants to make a living as a songwriter? Yikes. Don't write songs with 10 people. Because I have no <laughs> idea how they make money, how they make a living. Um, it's, it's working hard, you know, 
being, you know, you have to start out with having a talent um, and, and just working hard at it. That's, that's all I know. Like, that's what worked for me. So just work hard, make your songs great. And when you, you say work hard, you actually, did you ever sort of break down songs you like that you tried to, you said you were working on things endlessly just to try and understand why is this song so good? Do you mean that? I mean, just work on your own songs. Yeah. You know, like mm. if, if you're right, you know, if you, if you do anything, you know, you know, be great. No one wants to be one of the goods, right? You know, you want to. I mean, if you really want to do it, like do it, go all the way. That, I mean, in any. I mean, in anything you do, that's just how I look at it. Does that make any sense? Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's like you want to be an Olympic athlete. You know, you got to practice. You know, any anything. Yeah. It's like this. You don't sit. You don't sit around and go, "Wow, I want to do that," and you don't mm. put in the work. Do you have to write bad songs, or, 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 sort of on purpose, almost occasionally? Well, just on purpose, I don't. I don't. No. <clears throat> I mean, you know, mm. I don't think anybody wants to do that. I wrote a lot of bad songs, but I didn't think they were bad at the time. Mm. But it's like you have to learn. You know, you have to start somewhere. What, what do you self consider your your best songs? The songs you're proudest of? I mean, I'm proud of a lot of them. Some of them you haven't even heard yet. You know, some of those are some of my favorite songs, so. You know, yeah, uh, just a lot of them for different reasons. Mm. If you okay. have to mention two. Be, um, because You Love Me is one of them. Um, you know, Till It Happens to You, the song I wrote for Lady, that Lady Gaga sang. Yeah. That's one of my favorite songs. Mm. Um, I Was Here, that Beyonce sang. And then last year, um, Shirley Bassey, did a version of it. Yeah. That was really cool too, so. But you know, the, I, yeah. Till It Happens To You is used in a movie that's not that well known. It's, yeah. it's, about, yeah. it's about rape. Yeah. Uh, can, can you tell a little bit about that song? What's that song about? Yeah, but, and the song went beyond that movie. That's, you know, I said, Till It Happens To You, I didn't say what it was. So within that movie, that's what it, that's what it was about sexual assault, but outside of the movie, you know, it became whatever you wanted that to be about. Like, you know, going through something that, you know, someone's not understanding, you know, until it happens to you, you won't know how it feels, you know, so, mm. yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah, it, it, it's a right. fa fantastic song if you haven't Thank heard you. it. Yeah. Thank you. And the Beyonce song, can you tell about that? How was it working with her? Because she's so private, very few people are working with her. What yeah. was it like doing that song with Beyonce? Yeah, it was great. <clears throat> I got to be in the studio when, when, she, when she sang it. And, you know, talking about hard work, you know, she, she sang it for three hours. And then she goes, I'm taking a dinner break now. I'm going to come back and do it. I was like, what? That like... You know, you had it on the first five minutes, you know, it, that, that was the greatest performance. Yeah. She mm. goes, no, I'm going to get it better, I'm going to get it better, and, and she did. And, you know, I, I, I admire her work ethic. That's why she's a star. Mm. It's that. And it's you just maybe the, have the something. The talent and the work. Yeah, it's which both. is a quite good, uh, the same way you, you work as well, yeah. 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 Hopefully. Thank you for, for doing this. Thank you. Uh, we really look forward to seeing you get the, the award tomorrow from the Me Swedish too. King. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a big applause for Dan Warren. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Yeah.